Good morning, everyone. In today's video, I want to talk about the aperture. Which one is the best aperture? Which one is the optimal aperture? When to use what aperture and so forth. And I will start out by making an example by flying my drone. So the reason why I'm using the drone is that the DJI Mavic 2 Pro is a great example at seeing the difference in image quality between the different apertures. So the Mavic goes from f2.8 all the way up to f11. And by taking the same picture, the same frame at each aperture, you can compare them and very easily see which one is the sharpest. So let's just make a very fast comparison between all these different photos and we will do that in Photoshop. And you can see right here on my screen, I have what I shot with my Mavic 2 Pro and I have put all the photos into layers over here so we very fast can compare them. Let's just zoom in and let me just start out by saying we're zooming all the way into 300%. So in all honesty, in the very end, it does not make a massive difference. But nevertheless, right now we can see the shot at f11 and mm, it looks fine. But let's see what happens if we open up the aperture a little bit more. So at f10, we can already see an improvement. f9, f8, f7, f6, 3. And we can already see now that it is very, very sharp compared to f11. You can see f11 and f6, 3. Huge difference. Let's further open up the aperture f5.6, a little bit of improvement, 5, also a little bit of improvement, 4, 4.5, four, almost the same, 4, again, almost the same. Let's just compare 4 and 5.6. 4 is maybe a hair better. You can see the fine details in here and here. And it's a little bit softer in the f5.6. So f3.5, f3.2 and f2.8. So if we compare f2.8 and f4, we can see f4 is a hair better than f2.8. So even opened all the way up, the Mavic 2 Pro is actually pretty decent. It's not before we come all the way down to like F8, 9, 10 and 11 where diffraction comes in. And that's exactly the same experience I have from full frame lenses. Wide open, they are a little bit soft, but you only have to stop down one or two stops and they are almost as sharp as they can be. All the way through the middle range, let's say F5, 6 to F11. We usually say that the lenses are optimal in the image quality. You can further stop down to f13, 14, 16. For me, usually on lenses that goes all the way to f22, f16 is the closed downmost aperture that I would use, and I use it quite a lot. But f18, 20, and 22, I try not to use them because the diffraction simply becomes too severe. And remember, if you have a zoom lens, make this test at different apertures as the focal length value do influence the sharpness of the lens. Also remember, although you do get a sharp photo, sharpness isn't everything. To quote Ansel Adams, there is nothing worse than a sharp image of a fuzzy concept. So be sure to also have your composition in order. And if you want to learn more about composition, be sure to get my two ebooks on that topic. They're easy to read with minimal text and loads of photos to get to the point fast. Thanks to all of you who've already got them and for the five star reviews. It means a lot to me and it means that I can keep making these videos for you. There are links to the ebooks in the description of the video. 
So I made it into the field and I'm back at one of my favorite places to photograph when I'm back home in Jutland. My two twin trees. Admittedly, they are not mine, but I just like going here and look at those clouds and look at that sunset. We are in April, so the sun sets around here. Usually I'm photographing it from down here. So closer to summer, the sun sets more like over here is, so more behind the trees. So I have a little bit of another perspective in this video, but I actually don't mind that because what I figured out last summer was that I got a perspective here that I actually really, really liked, which was taken just a little bit further down the road here. So it's all about perspective. It's all about like getting used to a location and, and yeah, getting to know it because then you can move a little bit around, get comfortable with it throughout the year, figure out like, okay, do I have high clouds today? Which I have. And then you could go out to sunset and photograph it. And hopefully it will be absolutely epic with green grass, spring grass, not so green, a little bit of green, and then some naked trees <laughs> and an epic sky. When it comes to photographing a simple scene like this one, there's really not a whole lot to it. I put the camera on the tripod, the 28 to 200 millimeter is on. I optimize by being in aperture priority. There's no wind whatsoever, so the shutter speed doesn't matter. I go to f11, that is where this lens is rather sharp, ISO 100, and then I put my exposure compensation so that I'm shooting to the right so that I do not overexpose the highlights and have also some information in the shadows. And that's basically it. It's really, really simple. There's no reason for me to go all the way down to f2.8, which this lens can, probably not at 70 millimeter where I'm shooting. And obviously there's no reason to go all the way up at f16 anyway, because everything that I'm shooting is quite far away from me. I don't have any immediate foreground. So this is a brilliant example of just putting the lens at the aperture where it's the most sharp. So right now I'm trying to get the island, small island with the birch trees out here inside the frame. And I also want this little twig down here. And when I know I'm working with something that is close to the camera and something a little bit further away, I will have to stop down the aperture. I'm shooting with my wide angle lens, but I'm quite zoomed in. I'm all the way in at like 30 millimeter. So in that way, because I'm all the way in a 30 millimeter, I know that I can't just use any aperture. So to get both the twig right here in the foreground, the birch trees and the background in focus, I know that I cannot compromise too much on my aperture. The easiest way to check whether everything is in focus is basically just to check your screen afterwards. Check your photo before you go home, just to see is it in focus or is it also not in focus. In this case here, f11 wasn't enough. So I will have to use maybe f16 and maybe that will do the trick. I've zoomed a little bit out to 28 millimeter, but that's just because I could see that the frame wasn't entirely composed as I wanted it to. 
So if you're in doubt whether you have everything in focus, be sure to check the photo before you go home. So spring is finally really here and as you can see the forest floor is full of anemones. Absolutely gorgeous. When it comes to the aperture and photographing intimate details like this, I generally prefer to have a very open aperture so that I have a very narrow depth of field. So photographing flowers like this, I can really find like one flower that stands out focus on that one and then get these very intimate shots where the foreground and the background is very blurry and it's my subject the single flower that is very much in focus and right now i'm just trying with a few different perspectives which i think looks really 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 pretty I have already gotten quite a few different photos from different angles and you can see some of them here. And it is really just about playing around, figuring out which one flower you find to be the most beautiful and then try to isolate it and compose the scene around it. These few photos here are actually some I, I quite like. I'm usually not one to photograph intimate uh, and very blurry forest floor photos like these but this is definitely one thing you can do when it's spring and i personally prefer an aperture which is very open this specific lens here the 28 to 200 millimeter isn't perfect for this but in all honesty i think these photos come out really really well So there are many different techniques and principles that you can use to optimize your focus throughout the scene and get the best possible focus. Like some like to just shoot to infinity and close down the aperture so that you have most of the scene in focus. I personally prefer to shoot about a third into the scene, but like, you know, what is a third into the scene when you're basically going to infinity? Uh, and then there's double the distance method. It's not really one I'm using a whole lot, but I kind of am anyway, because the idea is to shoot a little bit further into the scene than your foreground. So double the distance means that if I want to have my foreground, which is the stump in focus, then I should double my focus distance and then I find what is also called hyperfocal distance. I still have to close down the aperture optimally to get the entire scene in focus. I still need to account for the distance between the camera and the foreground, and I also need to account for the focal 
length I'm shooting at. So the more I'm zoomed in, I have to close down the aperture even more. And the closer I am to whatever foreground it is I'm shooting, I have again to close down my aperture even more. So there are a whole lot of things that you need to balance to get proper focus. And in all honesty, when it comes to forest scenes where I like to implement a lot of depth, basically no matter what focal length I'm shooting at, I usually go to f16 and for the most part I do have to focus stack my photos if I want to have everything in focus. Especially in a wide angle photo like this, if I was focusing on this stump, the background would be way out of focus shooting at f16. So what I prefer to do when I know I have to focus stack is I go to f16 instead of f11 or f8. I prefer f16 because I want to have as much overlap between my foreground photo and then I also take a photo for the background and then I combine those in post processing with some kind of focus stacking method. So all these different focusing rules and techniques and depth of field tables, I don't use them. I usually just eyeball it and if I don't have everything in focus that I want to have in focus, I adjust appropriately. So those flower photos actually turned out much better than I had expected. And before we go into the last segment of this video, where we'll bring in some more examples with different apertures. I just want to let you know that if you enroll in my huge Photoshop for landscape photographers post processing course, you can learn all the tips and techniques I use to edit my photos. I've designed the course to be very progressive, so we start out easily and then we advance through the course with luminosity masking, focus stacking and all sorts of other different techniques such as light bleeding in from the side and adding and removing a little bit of atmosphere and using it all to your advantage. Also that you learn how to respect the light and avoid all the different editing mistakes that I see in, in many modern digital photos. There's a link down in the description, there's a coupon code so you can save a little bit of money. But let's get into the last segment here of the video where I'm going to show you a few different of my older photos or a few of the newer ones also uh, where there, where I've been thinking about the aperture and, and my decision making. So in this first photo here from the US, taking a 28mm f10 211 seconds ISO 100. So it's during sunrise I have a 10 stop filter on and the reason why I went for f10 was simply just to optimize to a fairly sharp part of the lens and find that balance between all the, the, the different settings. I wanted the long exposure so f10 was great. If I stopped all the way down to f16 I would have had to make a much longer exposure which wasn't necessary in this case here. f10 also I could have shot it at f5.6 because the foreground isn't so immediate. The same for this photo here from the Faroe Islands. There is no foreground to take into consideration. There is not a relatively big depth of field. I just have to have those islands there in the distance in focus. So I just shot it at f9, gave me a shutter speed of 1 160th of a second and everything was fine and optimized in regard to sharpness. In this photo though, I was all the way close to the sand. I was all the way down and at minimum focus distance. I remember how the lens was like this far above the sand. You can even see in the in the bottom of the photo that's a little bit out of focus, a little bit blurry. So I shot all these photos here at f16 and focus stacked the photo and f16 again just to have as much overlap between all the different photos as possible. I think I had to shoot five or six photos to get everything here in focus. Here I also had to focus stack. Again I was very close to the ground but I decided to go with f11. Here I just had to get all the photos in the beginning at f11 but even though I shot it all at f11 I should probably have gone to f16 because there is actually a little part of the photo here in the midground that is a little bit out of focus. Here I had to go to f22 to get everything in focus. I wanted to have everything in one shot because it was just super hard to photograph. It was raining, the water from the waterfall was splashing up onto the lens and I wanted to have everything in focus from front to back. And even though it's a little bit soft at f22, there are so many ways that you can sharpen now in post-processing that it was 
to optimize the scene to get everything in focus. And remember, if you want to learn how I focus uh, my photos, there's a link up here in the corner. Here I went for that f2.8, simply just to have the foreground a little bit blurry. Does it make a whole lot of sense from an artistic point of view? No, I wouldn't say so. But as you can see, all the way out at 200mm f2.8, the foreground is a little bit blurry. Here again, I just optimized for sharpness at 200mm. You can see how the immediate foreground is a little bit out of focus because I'm zoomed so far in. I even had to shoot at ISO 200 to get the, to get the shutter speed all the way up to 1 125th of a second. This very recent photo, again, I shot at f16 all the way out at 200 millimeter. And it's because you get that shallow uh, depth of field when you're zooming all the way into 200 millimeter. So shooting at f16 to get enough overlap between the different photos. And then I decided to photo stack it. So right here we are in camera raw and you can see I have my three photos that I focus stacked for this one. And if we zoom all the way in, here's the background photo with the tree where it is in focus. And you can see just a few meters in front of the tree, the grass start to get out of focus. So if we change to the middle one here, you can see how the tree is out of focus but some of the mid grass here is in focus. And then all the way down here in the foreground, it is out of focus. And then the last photo here, the tree is very much out of focus. The mid ground grass is out of focus. And then the foreground grass is more or less in focus. There's actually a few stores that are out of focus here. And then I combined these photos here to make the final photo where everything is in focus from front to back, even though I'm shooting at F16. And again, if I had been shooting at like say F8 or F11, I would have had to take even more photos to get everything in focus. And it would just have been a much bigger nightmare to combine this in post-processing. So if you want to know even more about how I focus my photos, be sure to check out the video on the screen right now. If you want to watch last week's video where I talk even more about composition, check out that video also. Else, be sure to check out all the links down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but thank you so much for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment.